After updating the Supermodel pre-configuration, I thought it about time that the Sega Model 2 emulator received the same treatment, with a few more fixes, tweaks and updates to the lowest scripts. And again, this gives me an opportunity to redo the setup guide here to make it more streamlined and cover some frequently asked questions towards the end of the video. Now, if you're new to the channel, essentially what I do is take these emulators and pre-configure everything so you don't have to. So I configure and map every single control correctly and I provide control layout images for your pause menus, front ends or just for reference. And I do this for every single game so you're never going to be lost with controls. But the configuration doesn't just stop there, with this being a list of just some of the things that have been done. But the main ones people are going to be concerned about is that controls have been pre-configured and the fact that this is light gun ready. And I am going to be giving light gun usage its own dedicated section of the video. Enough for the pre-ramble, let's just get into the setup guide. You can grab the Sega Model 2 emulator from this GitHub page here, and I'll pop a link for this in the description below. Then you just want to press on the downloads button here and download the most recent version, which is 1.1a. And yes, you are reading this right. This emulator hasn't received an update since 2014, but it's still the best emulator for Model 2 games. So just download the 1.1a version. Once you've got the emulator, you then need to grab the configuration files to make all of this work. And I've put these over on the Launchbox forums and I'll pop a link for this page in the description below. Then you just wanna press download this file on the right hand side here. And the top download here is the controller layout images. So you can download those if you want to. Then you have a choice of two different pre-configuration files. And which one you download is dependent on what type of controller that you have. So you want to double check which input type your controller is and then download the appropriate configuration files. Now with the D input configuration, I've done this using a PlayStation 4 controller. However, because input IDs can vary with D input controllers, your mileage may vary if you're not using a PlayStation 4 controller with D input. X input users do not need to worry about this because input IDs are identical between controllers. So if you have the choice between the two, always go with X input. Once you've downloaded the emulator and the configuration files, you wanna unzip both, and then you wanna transfer the configuration files into the Model 2 emulator folder, and make sure that you replace any files that are already there. And doing this configures absolutely everything, skipping hours and hours of setup for yourself. When it comes to ROMs, you wanna make sure that you're using merged ROMs, and it doesn't really matter which set that you get these from because of the age of the emulator. Now, if you keep your ROMs in this exact folder location here, you won't need to set your ROMs path. But if you put this in any other folder location, you'll need to manually set it, and it's really easy. All you gotta do is just click on the right-hand side of the folder path here, then just right-click and copy it, come back out, open up the emulator any file, and then just paste that right there. And that's your ROM paths all set, and make sure that you don't forget to save it. Now, as standard, the screen flash has been removed from both of the Virtual Cop games and House of the Dead. And thanks to the updates to the Lewis scripts, we now have cheats, scan lines, and the ability to toggle between anamorphic widescreen and 4x3 by simply pressing F5. The Lewis scripts with the widescreen hack enabled are the ones that have been used as standard, but I do appreciate not everybody likes hacking widescreen, or you might not even have a widescreen monitor, you might just be wanting to use this with 4x3 which is why I've provided 4x3 scripts here, just in case. So if you do wanna use those, just replace these ones in this folder location with the ones in this folder here. And all of the screen flash removal and cheats and scan lines are applied to these as well. This configuration is like unready with raw input being used and all games calibrated for both players. However, if you change the resolution, you may then need to recalibrate the light gun games. Now for me personally, when I changed my resolution, accuracy was not maintained. However, other users report that accuracy is maintained no matter the resolution. So if you do change the resolution and it's still accurate, that's a bonus, and if it's not, you will need to recalibrate. If you're a light gun user, then you're already gonna be aware of mouse indexing, and you can change your mouse index in the ini file with these two lines here. So this is for mouse player one, and this one is for mouse player two and I've left these at default values. So this one is in position zero and this one is in position one. 
So make sure that you change these to whatever positioning that you have your light guns at. And from here, you're pretty much good to go. So just double click on the emulator EXE. Then you just need to press the emulator top left, go to load ROM, and then just double click on a game to launch it. But do keep in mind, I've configured this on a one game, one ROM basis. So if there are multiple versions of a game available, just make sure that you're launching the parent version. One of the most common issues I get asked about is when exiting a light gun game. So when you press your escape key, it just puts it into windowed mode. But because raw input is being used, it will actually lock the cursor to that window. So you can't actually drag it out of there. And the easiest way around this is to drag your cursor out of the window and then press your windows key at the same time. And then just right click on the taskbar and just press close window. And that's the easiest way to do that. Now on that Launchbox forum page is a full write up on exactly what I've done here. So give this a good read through if you're interested. But towards the bottom of the page is a per game breakdown on exactly what I've done. And I've given more information here, including any cheats. And these are gonna be highlighted in green. So give this a read through to make sure that you're not missing out on any content. There we go, that's how to get the Sega Model 2 emulator all set up without having to spend hours doing it yourself. So if I managed to save you some time today, slam me a thumbs up, and if you wanna keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.